Hey there guys, so after 20 or so hours of testing different settings, I came up with what I deem to be the ideal settings for Quad HD with the 2070. It's not 60 FPS, but it doesn't dip below 30 FPS, and it doesn't chug your RAM. If you have 16, because if you have 32, you have nothing to worry about. It could even go ultra, because this card, it, it tackles ultra settings very well, but there's this little issue when you're approaching a big city, the RAM just spags and you lose a lot of performance. So I had to make a few compromises to get reasonable RAM usage and get rid of the stutters, the eventual stutters, which, you know, if they were very casual, very rare, that would be okay, you know, something we're used to. It's okay when a game just, you know, chugs for a little bit and then it gets back to normal after a bit. But that was not the case when running Ultra Settings. It would chug massively and it would completely disrupt the experience. And uh, I, I assume that's not what a gamer wants, what a simmer wants, because it literally just breaks the whole experience. You don't want that. You want, you know, your game just running decently as long as it's above 30 FPS, which is the whole point. So, after a lot of research, a lot of trial and error, more errors than, you know, <laughs> I finally came to a conclusion when it comes to graphics settings for Flight Sim 2020. And uh, I, got, I got a pretty nice setting that does allow for 30 plus simming at all times with different weather conditions doesn't really matter much fps rock solid it doesn't matter if it's ga airplanes airliners it will run decently but i had to make a few compromises it's still mainly ultra settings like uh textures clouds um reflections you know all the, the good stuff is basically maxed out, but I had to make a couple compromises when it comes to detail in general. So, let's do a, a quick, um, let's just look through the settings and I'll explain the compromises and why I chose to sacrifice those settings in order to get a better performance. So, VSync is on. Uh, I mainly did that to keep the temperatures under check because, you know, without VSync, it's going to go like 100 plus FPS in the main menu <laughs> using 100% of your card and you're not doing anything there, it's just idling. So, I don't really see a reason why I should do that. You know, extra wear and tear on card for no reason at all so I just locked to 60 my card doesn't reach the 60 either way so it's not like I'm capping anything uh, in game I mean so render scaling is 100% which is native quad HD TAA we're using uh, 100 LOD I went from 200 to 100 and that's because well I haven't really noticed the difference, honestly. So the LOD is basically the mesh. So mountains and stuff, you know, hills and all the geographical features of the globe, which 200, it looks nice and crisp, but hey, 100 looks basically the same. It's basically the mesh, so like from up close, like from really, really up close, you can tell a difference, but you are not going to be scraping the mountains with your airplane, are you? Basically not, right? So that's a sacrifice I made. Uh, vector data, ultra, buildings, ultra, trees. I was told to go down to medium, but what I noticed is that there's a lot of pop in when you use medium, and it, uh, and the trees look very ugly from afar. From up close, it's really uh, very similar. I couldn't tell the difference, honestly. 
like if we we stand like from here where the plane is the tree is down in the background if I switch to medium nothing's gonna change but once you go up there in the air with the plane the air the trees in the distance are gonna look very very weird skinny weird uh it's it's like a cardboard cutout basically from afar so i i went back to ultra because high also has the same uh issue apparently so ultra settings trees uh that's a compromise uh let's just say if, if you go down to medium if you're willing to go down to medium you gain a uh, three to four ish fps sometimes five depends on location of course if there's a bunch of trees you're gonna notice uh <laughs> the gains are gonna be a lot more obvious than let's say somewhere with not that many trees so that's something you're gonna keep in mind uh grass and bushes that's maxed out i do assume i could be getting a lot of performance gains by lowering that but i do like the grass i do like the bushes so i'm not gonna get rid of that i'm not gonna let that go mainly because it doesn't it's not the thing that eats ram the most and my issue was lowering the ram footprint so that i could have a more stable experience because I'm limited RAM wise RAM was my bottleneck so I had to get rid of the bottleneck somehow by just cutting everything that could be using extra RAM without any visual gains without any very noticeable visual gains because of course there's you know there's always the difference otherwise you know what would be the point of ultra settings if it doesn't really look better it does look better but you know it's such a tiny difference it takes it takes actual you know a fine eye to notice that and guess what I don't have one so well you know either way clouds ultra settings of course I want to see the beautiful sexy clouds that this game offers the amazing amazing volumetrics of uh, flight sim which are by far the most beautiful clouds I've ever seen and it beats Red Dead Redemption it does and Red Dead Redemption 2 was by far my favorite in that regard so textures ultra settings of course ain't, ain't, ain't going lower than that no 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 I want to see the beautiful cockpits I want to see the beautiful instruments and stuff so Textures have to be on Ultra, not letting go of that. But I do assume if you let go of that, the VRAM footprint is going to drop, so you're going to get a uh, better performance eventually. But then you're making a visual compromise. And we're trying to get performance without any major visual compromise. So, um, an isotropic filtering. We're looking at 16x. You know, with fast modern PCI tree cards, that's uh, that's not much of a. It's not gonna impact much performance wise. So, sampling six for, for six. I was using four times four, which I was still ah. Uh, you're gonna get a lot more performance. Visuals are not gonna differ that much, but they do differ. They do differ mainly when you're flying low. It's night and day. No way, no way. I'm using four times four. You could, you could. It does really give you like uh four or five extra frames depends then again it's very subjective because there's a lot coming into play depends on where you are flying over weather conditions airplane and a bunch of other things other factors so you cannot really you know <laughs> it's not really on stun that's what i mean uh flight sim performance in general it's not really on stun like it could be uh here in fairbanks with like 37 fps right like we're getting right now we're getting 37 38 and then you know maybe if i load in tomorrow same place same parking spot same weather on average i would be getting like different frames because that's the nature of flight sim you cannot really expect a solid consistent performance it does vary a lot mainly when you're not <laughs> up there in the 60 uh, in the 60s let's just say that so when you're down nearing 30s you know the frames do vary and then we have a lot of other factors coming into play like ram speed and cpu clock and gpu memory clock and all this stuff so either way uh water even though i heard water does skill performance i do like the water 
I'm a hydro homie, so yeah, I keep my water maxed out. Even though I shouldn't, but I do. And then, uh, that's where I've found the biggest gain so far, the biggest noticeable gain, the shadow maps. Shadow maps, they are usually at 2k, lowering them to 1024 gives you like a very very solid performance boost and that's consistent across different weather and locations and stuff so that's something else that I would recommend turning on turn lowering I mean not turning on like lower the shadow maps lower the terrain shadows and you're gonna see a massive performance boost and that's very consistent it goes across every sort of weather settings and airplanes you could be flying of course it does you know it doesn't really um, deliver crispy shadows as 2k shadows would but you know you're gonna get more frames that's the whole point you're gonna lower it around footprints well so it's a it, it's a it's a good sacrifice you know you sacrifice a, a little bit on the eye candy but you do gain on frames you do gain on stability which is very important you gain consistency and consistency is key when it comes to flight sim so everything else just maxed out so recap uh shadows and uh that's about it basically so the lords uh the shadows a little bit and uh bingo there you go that's your fix. Oh, not only the shadows, I forgot uh, uh, the LOD, which is the mesh, and uh, objects LOD. So terrain LOD, the mesh, and the objects lowered to 100. And the shadows, and that's all you gotta do to make your 2070 tackle this game in quad HD without major issues. Any runs like a dream. As you can tell, we are in Fairbanks, Oregon, OG20. It's a, it's a very nice scenery by Orbex. It's free, so what are you waiting for? You should try it out. It's amazing scenery. And as you can tell, the performance is very consistent no matter what. We're using real-time weather and where are the clouds are out there. Okay, so that's about it for the video. I could even fly, show you guys around, but the whole point is, you know, I want to make it as short as possible just to get a point across, sacrifice the shadows a little bit. It's it, it, it it's barely noticeable from, you know, up there, from all the way up there in the air. Uh, up close and personal, it's a little bit blurrier than usual. That's very noticeable. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, as you can see, they're not the sharpest shadows ever, but way better than what we had beforehand no matter what and uh, you're not really going to notice once you're flying concentrated on you know trying to get to your point and land safely so yeah it's a it's a very valid compromise and you know ld wise as you can tell 100 looks pretty fine still it's not the best thing it's not the most amazing oh i never noticed that hangers for rent can i rent one either way um yeah, as you can tell, it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, the buildings, the houses and stuff, they still look pretty crisp. Even though, you know, it's apparently a 50% compromise on their quality. They still look very nice. Very, very nice. You don't miss out a lot visually and you get a huge performance boost. I want to say, frame-wise, it's not like, oh, night and day. But you gain consistency. You know, and depending on whether you gain 10 FPS, which is massive. When it comes to flight simulation, 10 FPS is a lot. It couldn't be a lot for a FPS sort of game. But for a flight sim, 10 FPS is like, it, it, it's actually night and day. And the fact that you don't lose out on quality that much, because you're, you're, you're making a compromise, but it's such a barely noticeable sort of compromise. So, I mean, why not? You go for it and gain that stability, mainly if you have 16 gigs of RAM. Because with 32, you might not have to do that. I'm not sure yet, because I haven't tested it myself. I'm yet to buy another stick. But 
uh, for, for, from now is I, I can really, you know, I have to settle with 16 for the time being. And this compromise allowed me to play flight sim without any major hiccups. And it's been a lot more enjoyable than it was before. I mean, it was amazing still. Like the pre-tweak, my pre-tweak experience was fine. But I I was getting tired of like approaching a big airport like AMCO and the frames is going nuts. Like one FPS, two FPS. And then, uh, you know... It's kind of painful because you just you just want to fly and appreciate the scenery and move the camera around and it's like, you know, struggling. And he hurts. Because you've, you know, it gives flashbacks from, you know, Flight Sim Max. <laughs> JK, even worse than Flight Sim Max performance. So if you do, like, that little tweak, that little change... With the LODs, the mesh detail, and, uh, and the object detail, you gain so much in terms of performance and stability that, you know, you can barely notice and, and it gets so much more enjoyable. I tell you, I've been flying like for a couple of days now with this new tweakish, and holy cow, I was sitting around 4041. Without drops, that's insane. And before, sometimes it would drop down to 25, and even in like minor airports, like minor cities, the frames would just die when approaching because of the shadow maps and the, all the stuff and the uh, unnecessary, unnecessary uh, LOD. So yeah, that's basically it for today. As, as uh, mentioned before, it's just. Just trying to get point across here. You gotta make a few compromises, but you can get the performance to a very solid level with it, with your game still looking amazing, as you can clearly see here. I uh, hope it helped you guys somehow, you 2070 owners, maybe even the 2080 owners out there. I wish you all a good day and a good night or whatever. And see you all in the air. Sometime. Adios.